Often do you find yourself glued to your phone every day, refreshing your social media feeds over and mm -hmm. over? There's certainly good aspects of social media and its ability to kind of keep us connected with loved ones and friends, but it's easy to get sucked in and become a bit of a detriment to our mental health. And that's why today we want to talk about social media addiction and how to have a healthier relationship with your social media. Is it really possible? Though? I don't know. We're going to find out. Joining us this morning is Dr. Thea Gallagher, a clinical psychologist and assistant professor with NYU Langone Health. Dr. Gallagher, always great to see you. Good morning, Dr. Yeah, happy to be here. Thank you. First of all, what is it that makes social media so addicting? Because I literally the other day saw my son, who's 13, and he was just, his thumb was just going like this. And I said, do you even realize what you're watching? He goes, honestly, I don't even know what I'm looking like. He's like, I'm just in a trance. Mm. And this was from my 13 year old. Yeah, well, you're explaining one f feature of it, which is like kind of like a numbing behavior. Like it's just stimulating enough that sometimes we can like kind of keep with it and we're getting enough stimuli that it's hard to like separate from it if we don't have something else that's engaging our attention. And another part about it is it's really reinforcing, you know, when you're getting likes, um, you know, dopamine bumps, you're like, oh, okay, that feels good. And so again, thinking of like gambling or any other kind of thing that is, is reinforcing, it can be really hard to step away from something that gives us that instant gratification. Right. So is it possibly truly addicted to social media in the way we think of like a drug addiction, like alcohol or something like that? I mean, is the addictive behavior similar? Yeah, I mean, I think when we're talking about addiction, we're always talking about when you go to try to control your behavior, are you having a difficult time doing that? And I mm. think many of us are finding that that's what happens with social media and our phones. We have to um, be really intentional about taking breaks from them because when we don't, we find that it's just something that we easily go back to. And it's, so I think it's harder for us to control our consumption of social media and the use of our phones than we realize. And again, I think it's because it is so reinforcing. And I think it leads us to, to think that we have to probably be more intentional with our behavior, just like we do with our eating, mm -hmm. drinking, exercise, a lot of healthy habits in our life. We have to set up good patterns and be more intentional. Hmm. And to that point, what are the signs that we're having mm -hmm. unhealthy relationships with social media? And is that something we can hold our, can we really hold ourselves accountable? Or do we need someone to say, hey, dude, put your phone down? You need down. an intervention? Right, right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, it would be kind of easier for some of us if we did have someone to hold us accountable. Right. But as adults, most of us do have to hold ourselves accountable for our own behaviors, whether it's, you know, working out, whether it's, you know, again, eating right. But with, I think with kids, we can have more of an involvement if you're a parent or, you know, a, a, a guardian in their life, you know, really kind of being a little bit of the gatekeeper there for the amount of time. I know sometimes people turn the Wi-Fi off at night, et cetera, things like that. But I think for ourselves, mm -hmm. we have to take intentional breaks from that we can be away from our phone and really putting it in another room, turning it off, turning it over. Um, and engaging with what's in front of us. And really, again, kind of creating those patterns and making that also a norm in your life, hmm. that you can take intentional time away from your devices. Right. Yeah. The physical disconnect right. is the first step. Another thing that's been picking up in the last few years, though, is teens, young adults, they're turning to TikTok to try and diagnose yeah. mental health conditions. Now, as a clinical psychologist, what's your take on this? Something doesn't sound like that's the best place to get uh, information from in terms yeah. of this. Well, you know, the internet and social media, we know there's so many great things and then there's some problematic things. So there's actually like a lot of really reputable therapists on TikTok. There's a lot of great information that's coming out that's destigmatizing mental health, but then there's also a lot of pseudoscience, a lot of false information. So you really have to go back to the source. Um, you know, I have had patients come to me and tell me that what their diagnosis is and I'm like, well, you know, let's explore this together. Let's do some of the question asking. You know, I went to right. a lot of school to help you with this, so <laughs> let's right. do this that's together. Right. But I love that it's destigmatizing mental health, that we can talk about it, that people are curious about what's going on in them. But then I think we have to make sure that you're really talking to trusted professionals in the field to um, to help with further, uh, you know, commitment to treatment and, and diagnosis. Okay. And we are glad you went to school for that because we get yes, to talk to you on that you. television about it. So thank we'll you need so you much. again. Trust us. <laughs> Happy to be here as always. Dr. Thea Gallagher, thanks so much for your time. Have a